Hello, everybody. This is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net, and this is part two of our two-part series on JavaScript closures. If you haven't already, you might want to go back and watch part one of this series so that you'll kind of have the background on what problem we're trying to solve. So in this video, we are actually going to show you how a JavaScript closure can get around the issue that JavaScript does not have such a thing as a private instance variable. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. How do you get around this problem where you don't want people accessing your private variables? For all intents and purposes, you want first name to be a private variable. You don't want this to be something that people can go in and mess around with. So in order to do this, I'm going to just copy this entire thing here and I'll show you exactly how it's done. So let's go down below here and we're gonna call this person closure just so that we can keep the two samples together. All right, so here's where things change a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a couple of variables. We're gonna call it first name, underscore first name, and underscore last name, all right? Now, these in JavaScript are private variables. Anytime you put var inside a function at all, that is scope to this. But this is now where closures come into play. So all a closure is, is it allows methods inside a, a particular function. So this person closure function, these variables are local to person, person closure. What a closure allows you to do though is inside another function, like set first name, it allows you to access variables outside of itself. And even further up, it can access global variables, but you should not be using global variables anywhere. If you are, you should basically get rid of it if possible um, because it just makes things impossible to debug. But, so here's what we're going to do now. Here, instead of this dot first name, we're going to set underscore first name to that so first name and here we're going to say return underscore first name and then we're going to do the same thing down here and notice we're getting rid of this these are no longer member variables these are local variables to the person closure method but not actually to set last name we are not defining these inside here but we can still access them so let's do the same thing here and then here, let's get rid of this. Oh, no, actually, we're going to keep that the same. We want this to be get first name and this dot get last name because those are member. These are member functions now. All right, so now what we're going to do is we've got these this set first name and this dot set last name. That's beautiful. So everything's mostly the same. The only thing we've really done is we've gotten rid of this everywhere and we made these local variables. So now let's do something similar to what we did above, except let's do Jane Doe now, right? So let's say var Jane equal new. Uh, I think it was person closure. Yeah, let's just copy that. New person closure and we'll call it Jane. And we're gonna say Doe, all right? And let's do a console.log on Jane, just, just that object, because we want to see what we get out of this. All right, so check it out. We have a person closure object down here now. And you can see, wh where did first name and last name go? They're not there. You absolutely cannot access those, those variables. Now that we've seen that we can't actually access the first name or last name the way that we did previously, Let's see what we have. So let's say console.log jane.get full name like we did with John Doe. And let's update this. Check it out. There's Jane Doe. That's sweet. So what we can't do now is we can't say, hey, jane.firstname equal uh, Jane, all lowercase, right? We can't do that. It's not going to let us. If I update this, I'm going to get an error down here. Uh, or actually, no, I don't. So here's the interesting thing. This will probably, this will just set, and this is what's dangerous, but it's not the same thing. So you will be creating a variable here. And this is one thing that is actually kind of scary about JavaScript. And uh, I'm kind of glad that I accidentally did this. So if I say console.log on Jane now, what you're going to see is you're going to see the same object, except now you're going to see a Jane or, or a first name 
as Jane, but that is not what get first name or get full name use. So if I come down here now and I say console dot console dot log Jane dot get full name, you'll see that yeah the object has uh, first name Jane in there, but check it out. It did not use that variable that we just created by sticking it on to the object. So one of the things about JavaScript is you can just add properties um, you know, on the fly like I did right here. But you notice it's not being used because I still have a capital. If we want to then go in and change this to D-O-U-G-H like we did previously, we've actually got to say Jane.set last name. And we're going to say do, but let's do it all lowercase just to make sure everything's good. And then let's do a Jane dot uh, uh, console dot log, and then Jane dot get full name. All right, and so now we should see that her name changed. Yep. So, as we expect, we have our person closure here. It's got Jane Doe when we first when we first dump it out. Then we set this first name. And so if we look here, this is what I was talking about. Notice that, and this is just part of the way the debugger works, but we dumped out Jane up here. First name didn't exist at that point in time, but this variable, because it's an object, is shared by reference. So when, it, when you look at it in the debugger, it's going to show you the same thing. If I were to go down here and add another variable down at the very bottom, you'd see it reflected in all these. But here's the interesting thing, right? So now you come down through here, we set dough using the setter, not trying to access anything directly because you can't. And here it is down here. So what closures really buy you in JavaScript is the ability to create member variables that are private on a class. So similar to a strongly typed language like Java or C Sharp or you know any number of others out there, this is how you actually go about creating private variables that are your storage that only your member methods or functions have access to. So hopefully you learned a little something here. I'm going to put this link in the show or in the notes right below this video so that if you'd like to go check it out and play with this video fiddle you'll be able to do so but um that's it javascript closures in a nutshell this concludes part two of our two-part series on javascript closures please do click the thumbs up below the video and subscribe to our youtube channel as we'll be bringing more learning videos in the future then head over to www.codingblocks.net and check out our podcast where you can listen and learn and be entertained on the go. We have links to all the popular podcast platforms on the site, such as iTunes, Stitcher, and more. And you can also find additional learning resources over there. So thank you again for hanging around, and we look forward to bringing you more videos.